How's it going, everyone? Cappy here, 410 Expedition. I know a lot of you have been waiting a very long time for this video. In this video, we're going to talk about the new trailer build that I've been working on, on and off here and there, and uh, it's time we talk about it. So first off, our idea is that we are going to take the rooftop tent off of the JK that we, Tracy and I had built. I'm going to use the top portion, the top of the clamshell and the tent material that's going to be mounted on top of this trailer so that the, the purpose is that we can stand inside the living quarters in the back of the trailer. So let's walk around. Let me show you what we've done or what I've done so far and what the plan is. So in the front here of the trailer, we've got the main living compartment. In the front, I'm going to have a 26 inch by, I believe this is going to be three feet here, the box in the front. And this is where my door is going to open. This is where the Dometic slide out is going to be because my kitchen is going to be here on a double slide. I haven't finished it yet. On a double slide system so that my stove. Hello guys. my smallest fans. There'll be a double slide system here where my stove is going to come out and maybe just a little bit of a countertop. This way, when I'm in here, even though the tire is going to be here, there'll be a nice work surface here as well. And when this opens up, I have access to all of our dishes, our cookware and our utensils. This is where that small window will be. It'll be a tinted window which is uh, the same type of window that you put on the van life or on sprinter vans. On the inside, you can open it. There'll be a small screen to give you airflow in here. So that's the intention here is my workspace and my kitchen space with my Dometic at the front. On the opposite side of that box will be my power management system with a shelf to put you know tools or whatever I need in the front to get easy access to. On the other side, I have the same opening compartment, which is a, uh, below the front bench. That's where I can get my, my wheel locks, my blocks, our camp chairs, maybe an extra little folding table can be stored on the exterior, or sorry, on the other side of the trailer. Now let's talk about the length, the width, and the height of the trailer. The trailer itself from, from the back bottom to the front will be eight feet. Okay, and then the height of the actual trailer itself is four feet. The front box is going to be a two, a two foot box up to three feet up to here. And the width is going to be 55 inches wide. The reason why we did 55 inches is because the rooftop tent itself was built 55 inches wide in aluminum and I wanted to keep that width. Secondly, it's exactly the width of a double bed mattress is 55, well, 54 inches. And it gives you room to pack, you know, pack some uh, material like the bedding, whatever in on the side. So 55 inches is the perfect width for this trailer. Now I know what you're all saying. Okay, Kathy, it's all looking good and everything, but what are you putting it on? So here it is. Last weekend, we built the chassis or the frame to put all of that onto here had my son's friend who's a welder and he's a good welder too uh, i went and bought all of the steel from a uh, steel manufacturer a steel supplier in calgary i gave him all the dimensions that i needed all the everything was pre-cut for me and they did a bang on job so all i had to do was weld everything together and then i gave it a few coats of easy liner spray Again, this frame is eight feet long by 55 inches wide. And I installed a pair of equalizer torsion axles and they are 3,500 pound rated. Now these torsion axles come standard with a five bolt pattern on a four and a half space. You know, so it's a five on four and a half. Jeep wheels are five on five as we call them in the Jeep world. So I got these, these adapters, which is also an inch and a quarter spacer to fit a five on five bolt pattern. Because my plan is 
to install the KO2s that I had on the Jeep, which I know I have uh, dirt tracks. These are still in great condition, and you know what? Let's reuse them. So these are 33-inch tires. All I got to do is find some steelies, just some 17-inch uh, wheel size Jeep bolt pattern. So if anybody out there has an extra set of just inexpensive steelies, please reach out to me. I'd be interested to talk. So at the front, as you notice, I have it in a triangle format and I've put the, by the way, this is a two by two by one eighth wall welded square tube. Okay, this is what we use. Uh, strong enough, sturdy enough. And why the, the reason why I decided to put this underneath the main chassis is to give it a lot of that tongue weight strength. I didn't want any flexing to happen because on the first trailer, I did a single bar going all the way to the back and it bent. So we had to weld a gusset underneath the center bar to keep it from flexing any further. I installed a two inch hitch mount on the front of the trailer here. The reason why I chose this and not your standard two inch ball type of receiver um, is because I want, and I'm going to install a max coupler, a 6,000 pound rated max coupler, because you get that tri-axis rotations in every uh, possible way. So if the trailer was to flip on its side, I don't damage a, the, the receiver or the two inch ball, because then you're screwed. Then you're out in the trails and you have no way of pulling that trailer out. With a max coupler, uh, you'll get the 360 rotation, you'll get a nice articulation up and down, and of course your side to side. So I've had that in the EH2, I loved it. It's quieter than your standard two inch ball because when you're riding, you get that vibration jumping noise on the two inch ball. This has a much quieter ride. And when we get to camp, I can remove the pin, remove that receiver here, no one can steal my trailer because they have no way of hooking up. So that's the reason why we have this installed at the front of the trailer. And now today's mission is to get this painted as close as I could the same color as Mando, as the Jeep Wrangler. And the color I chose is called Shadow Mountain. Kind of a cool name, I like that. So we're going to give it its first coat. We're going to see how it dries, see how it looks, and see if I have to modify, maybe go back to the paint store. Now, the paint that I use is bare, and it is a semi-gloss exterior paint. I tried to get a full gloss, but for an exterior paint, they don't offer that, so I got a semi-gloss. So I'm trying to get more of that professional glossy look on the trader, trying to break away from it looking like it's actual wood or drywall. But... You can't get away from that texture, which I think is going to give it a pretty good rugged look anyway. So that's today's mission is to get this exterior done in a shadow mountain paint. I'm really loving this color. Just to give you a reference to my skin tone, to the Shadow Mountain Gray. Okay, so I've got the first coat of paint around the entire trailer, except for the front here. The box here is gonna be black, and this is gonna be hidden anyway, so I'm not gonna waste any paint on doing the front here. Everything else is gonna have black doors, so black accents, black accent trim that I'm gonna seal all the joints with. I'm gonna get some 45 aluminum cut right here to protect this and protect here. Uh, overall, I'm loving the look of this color. I'm already seeing a little bit of white that's popping up because it's only the first coat. And I'm seeing some little imperfections where there might have been a hole 
or something I didn't sand all the way through. I hate painting. It's my least favorite thing to do in any project is paint. And Tracy knows that. Um, so I'm learning as I go here with painting. So I'm seeing some imperfections, let it dry, fix them, give it a second coat, and it should be good. I'm already seeing a little bit of a, a gloss to it, which is nice, like not really a reflection, but I think it's gonna look just perfect. To match the Jeep and the black accent trims on the Jeep, the trailer's gonna have all that same look as well. Okay, now let's talk about the interior of the camper. I will do a final interior reveal, probably at the uh, uh, Alberta Overland Adventure Expo in September. I'm not gonna show it yet, but I'm gonna do the final reveal at the expo. Then I'll have a video for you uh, when it's done. Cause I think it's gonna be done around that time, right before we leave. I think we're gonna be cutting it close on the timing. But let's talk about the interior. So as you can see here, we have a U-shaped bench, okay? The intent of this is that we can sit inside the camper with the rooftop open. What I plan on doing is using the top portion of the rooftop tent that we built. Take the bottom off, but I'll use the top portion, hinge it at the front, and it's gonna have the tent material. So we can pop the tent up and stand inside freely and have all that movement. There'll be a table here on a couple of pivot legs. So the table will be at a certain height and it's gonna pivot down so that it makes the platform here to make this into our sleeping space. So a couple of purposes there. Now, if the winds get really, really high uh, and it's just where you don't wanna tear the tent or it's just too much wind, we can still close the top and still sleep in here like as if it's a teardrop trailer, but more of a mobility to sit and sleep in here if you want. The door is gonna be at the back here, so it's gonna be at an angle system, so the top is going to go up and it's gonna release the bottom part and there'll be either a step or two. I haven't decided yet, maybe one step because I'm gonna have a 24 inch clearance on this, a 24 inch height, two feet of height. Underneath these benches, of course, will be um, some storage space on hinges. So on this side and this side, and um, that way we can store more of some, you know, clothes or boots or shoes or whatever we want and just tuck it away nice and neat. The interior of the entire uh, trailer is going to, is also insulated with a three quarter inch foam insulation with the reflective side to keep the trailer nice and cozy, cool in the summer and warm in the winter. I'm not installing a heater in this because I don't plan on doing too much of winter camping uh, in this in this unit. If, uh, if I want, I'd probably get a buddy heater just to keep the area space and then just go to sleep. Now, as you can see, all the way along here, I've chosen a two by two wooden stud system. And the reason why I did that is we can drill the holes through the studs and do all of our wiring to keep it all tucked in a way so when I enclose everything, you won't see any exposed wires anywhere. On the back here is where I'm gonna be able to manage all of my lights, my interior lights, I will have three sets of LED light strips in here and I'll have some exterior working lights. And I'll be able to control that and see my battery. I could charge a couple of devices here and use a 12, 12 volt plug over here. So all of that is going to be mounted right back here so I can keep an eye and monitor all of our power. Second coat of paint is on, it's dry and it looks awesome. I can actually see a slight reflection of my hand, which is what I wanted. I wanted kind of a gloss look, professional look, but it's the best that I could get. Then I installed my marker lights. I got my forward ambers, I've got my red at the back here, and I've got some LED, uh, I guess, around work lights. One here for the pullout, one up here, this side here, and I have a matching one on the other side. I can flip a switch on the inside of the trailer and have some working lights. I have a fourth light that's gonna be installed on the working area where the battery management system is gonna be on the other side. So there you have it. 
this is where I'm at now and we'll keep doing some more videos as the build process continues. Thanks for watching and have a great day.